Bubba Wallace. Get off over there and stop. Get out and take it Well, three of the four Joe Gibbs cars are in positions 29 through 32 right now. Any hand? Go! Anything's been out here. As they all slowed down. Yes, TRD has been struggling big time on these road courses with this next gen this year. It's struggling to even try the top 10 most likely. You've got championship drivers and drivers who have usually been good here at these road courses like Mark Drake Jr. and Kyle Busch struggle to even crack the top 5 in these races. While other teams just as Colling, Hendrick, and Penske Racing all finding victory and all finding success of these races. They're still struggling and struggling hard. They can barely find any kind of room or any means of getting victories at these tracks. In October of 2021, NASCAR started testing the next gens at the Charlotte Roval to see how their package should be set up for the road courses. And luckily enough, it gave some hope. Mark Drake Jr. MTJ and his teammate Denny Hamlin were the fastest ones in this practice session. It gave a lot of Shrek's fans a lot of hope going into 2022, and they gave a lot of Toyota fans hope, hope that they keep on striving with this uh, road course winning and road course talent. Impressive, I like it. Now, I want to pivot a little bit and talk about the next gen car next year for just a moment, because I saw an interview you did, uh, I think earlier this summer, where you said, if the next gen car isn't fun to drive, then you may not hang around for too much longer. So I want to know, because you've tested the next gen at uh, the Charlotte Oval and the Roval, I believe. So how do you feel the next gen car is going to drive? Do you think it will be fun to drive, or are you just guessing at this point? You know, I think from my, my testing experience in the car, it's uh, it's definitely fun to drive. It's, it's going to be a huge learning process. So I look forward to that. That's the fun part about racing is the challenge and, um, you know, the fact that it's always changing. You always have to change and adapt. So, yeah, I'm open-minded about it right now. I'm not making any conclusions. Um, you know, just going to get out there and, and see how it is. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's fun and we enjoy it and we're successful. Now, I just don't want to talk mainly just about tricks. I want to go through all the drivers from Denny Hamlin all the way to Kurt Busch and even Ty Gibbs. I want to show you how the the best, who's been the worst, and who needs to improve and see how they can improve in total as a team. Up first, we have Denny defending Hamlin. Yes, he has probably been the worst driver as best finish of, best finish of 14th that came at Indy a few weeks ago. His worst finish was 31st that came at Sonoma of all tracks. Although Hamlin is not one of the best road course racers there was before the next gen, he certainly wasn't one of the worst. He always made mainly top five, top 10 driver in these road courses. If Hamlin doesn't clean up his act, it won't be a lot of In the endless rain of confetti. In six road course starts, Denny Hamlin has zero top fives, zero top tens, three laps led, zero poles, and an average finish of 21.4. That is not good. Denny Hamlin needs to improve his stats in these road courses if he wants to make it deep into the playoffs. Yes, we only have one more race to go into the, no, I meant five road courses, by, by, the, by the way, my bad. Only one more race to go in the, um, one more road course, but that's a roval and that's a cutoff race. If he doesn't have enough points by the Talladega, and um, Texas, he, he should he should need it. He needs a bed. Our next man is Kyle Rowdy Bush. Yes, he's a multiple time winner at road courses, but it's not one of the strong suits of winning, but he's also one of the most consistent drivers before the season. And his best finish at these road courses are an 11 place finish at Indy. Look, I gotta tell you, man, Kyle Bush has been a very disappointing driver. I'm sorry to hear background noise, but brother would never shut up. But Kyle Busch has been a very disappointed driver this year. He is nothing of a championship driver, and he's nothing as what you should say as he is. This next gen is really screwed him over, but I hope he has hope at RCR. In the five road course races, Kyle Busch's best finishes are 28th, 29th, 30th, 11, and 22. I know it's very early in the playoffs. I know we haven't had a road course yet. But besides that, I feel like Kyle Busch, even if he does have to rely on Charlotte Roval as a win, it's not going to be likely. He has not been the best driver. He's been far from his championship self. And I feel like he just needs that uplifting that Richard Childress will bring to him. I'm happy for him for the new opportunity. Now let's talk about the next guy in line, Martin Trix Jr. 
with Martin Jr. missing the playoffs this year, even though he's had probably one of the most competitive seasons and probably the second best besides Chase Elliott this year, with the third most laps led, you know, he's been really consistent. He's a good driver. Don't get me wrong, he's a great driver this year, and he don't have to worry about the trailer level as, as he missed the playoffs. I mean, it's simple as that, and it's pretty kind of good for him. And this fact might shock you, but Martin Jr.'s best finish to road course this year is the seventh that came at the first road course race this year at Texas. His stats in the five road course races are, in fact, zero top fives, zero, uh, one top ten, um, zero laps led, and no poles. I mean, his second best finish is 13th that came at Road America. So he hasn't been the worst road course racer out of any means. He hasn't been on the par because he's usually top five driver of these road courses, which is kind of confusing to see that he wasn't up there all day at any of these races. But, um... Other than that, Trix is kind of set that you don't have to worry about the roll, but his he still struggled because it's hard to see him finish 23rd majority of the time at these racetracks. I mean, he's got to step it up, man. It's his last race right before the next gen in the road course of the Charlotte Roval, and he had a terrible race towards the end of the race. Now, I think that's what kind of fell off because he has not been the same since. And here's the final guy at Joe Gibbs Racing. We then went through all three of his other teammates. The last number in order, Christopher Bell. Although making the playoffs and having a win and probably started the season, the, has probably been the most consistent wheel drive there has been all year. With two NASCAR Cup Series wins coming in his career, this one of them at New Hampshire this year. But his first one came at a road course last year. At a road course that we don't run anymore in NASCAR. And it was the... Daytona road course last February but this is a whole new car this is a whole new setup and this whole new team this is we have nothing to do with the gen 6 let's look at his stats in 2022 and five rows road course starts this year Christopher Bell has one top five one top 10 17 laps led and his worst finish was 27th that came at Sonoma where all the Joe Gibbs racing and even the 2311 car struggled I don't hate Bell by any means, but this just shows something. Him and Martin Drake Jr. out of the Joe Gibbs bunch have probably been the best, and Christopher, Christopher Bell has probably been the best driver there is at road courses and Toyotas in this section that we've mentioned in general. He has the most laps led of anyone. He has the most top fives and most top ten. Well, the most top fives, yes, of anyone at this thing, and it's kind of it's kind of important to see that. He is going to need that at Charlotte Roval. His performance in this first round of the playoffs, this is right before Bristol when I'm editing this, has been great, so I don't think you'll need to rely on Charlotte Roval, but he is a good driver and expect him to run up front at the Charlotte Roval. Switching to the most recent winner as of this upload, Bubba Wallace in the 23 car and the tw team 2311 racing. Let's look at his stats. In five starts, he has one top five. That also counts as a top 10, zero laps led, and his best finish besides that is 35th position twice, which came at Road America and at Watkins Glen. Aside from that P5 finish he got from the wild and wacky race at the Indy Road Course, Bubba Wallace has not had a better finish than 35th at any of these races. Besides Kyle Rowdy Bush, Bubba Wallace has probably been one of the worst drivers in Toyota Pipeline. Bubba Wallace has improved this year, stats overall on the board, not just the win, but everything else. But he got to get better at these road courses because they keep adding them and they're one of the necessary things you have to have in order to be a good driver in NASCAR. From the 23, we go to the 45, Kurt Busch. Now, he has been out of the race out of the race car since Jul the end of July uh, this year, and it, it kind of hurts me. Kurt Busch has been a great driver all year, and he probably wasn't most consistent, but he's one of the fan favorites, and he's starting to become one. Um, as he's aging, he's getting a little bit better. That, that win every year, you know. But let's talk about the road course stats for Kurt Busch. Now, in two less starts than anybody else in this video, his best finish is 18th that came at Sonoma, and his worst finish is... 32nd at Coda. He has no top five, no top tens, no laps led. Yeah, he's kind of sounding like a broken record here because all these drivers in this video, besides Christopher Bell and maybe Martin Dre Jr., have been really off on their road course stats. From 2019 to 2021, he, is, he was more like a hit or miss, if you will. Kurt has never been really good at road courses to begin with, but he has not been bad. Um, 
I, I don't know how do you improve him. He will probably come back for next year. We don't know yet because these injuries, and it feels really bad to say this, he might not come back with a 45 team. And it it, it hurts to say that because I, I don't know, man. I A lot of people like this man, and he's not a bad driver, but road course stats, you know, they're bad, just as all these drivers, video, drivers in this video. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Ty Gibbs for a moment and then we're going to end this video off right there and two road course stats ty gibbs has a best finish the 17th with him in his first one at the brickyard and his second one was 26th at the Glen. obviously zero laps led and zero top five zero top tens but he hasn't been bad necessarily he had some speed and practice of the 2000 uh the the race at the brickyard which was surprising to see but I don't know he's really unexperienced and i don't like the fact that he will most likely take the 18 after kyle bush leaves at the end of the year look i'm a ty gibbs fan in xfinity but any ty gibbs fan would let you know that they really don't like this move we saw it with joey logano it nearly ended his career we saw it with multiple drivers i think ty gibbs needs another year until he gets in there yes he's a great driver but his inconsistency in xfinity will not pan well in the cup series what do i personally think about all these drivers well the winner of the best driver in this whole competition is christopher bell no doubt about it he yes he might probably have a lot of low top things but you can see he does not have as much luck as of the other drivers in this car my honest opinion toyota trd and all these teams need to sit down this off season and they need to try to work on this car i know it ain't their fault it's a new car and all that but chevy and ford even though ford has not won a road course this year have been probably better miles leaps and bounds better than toyota this year toyota needs to really step it up they want to compete for championships and more races yes their drivers are getting old and they need to next few years do what chevy did and hendry did a few years ago and rebuild but other than that they need to get this package set up because it would not help people like ty gibbs and other drivers in the pipeline when they move up like John Henry Machick. Anyway, what do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. And if you're real, please leave a like, subscribe for more. These video takes a long ideas, and I've been working on this video for like a week now. Please leave a like, subscribe for more. And until next time, have a good one.